Hey, welcome to the Wisconsin Drunken History Podcast. We are your hosts, Eric Sturgeon. And I'm Russell Sorry. This podcast is about all things Wisconsin, history, music, culture, and beer. Although we don't often use strong language, the content is not intended for young audiences, so listener discretion is advised. If you love the bluegrass music you hear in this intro, please check out Dang It's from Madison, Wisconsin by visiting their website, dang-its.com. Now on to the show. All right. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Wisconsin Drunken History Podcast, your weekly dose of the dairy state. And uh, we are, of course, your hosts, Eric. And I'm Russ. And uh, this week we are discussing some amazing crunchy history uh, that is the potato chip history uh, in the great state of Wisconsin and uh, the deep roots that it actually has in our state. Um, We have great Wisconsin music from Bad Year. We have another Wisco Brew Review, an installment of the infamous How Many Locos You At, and we have an interview with none other than, literally, Milwaukee Chip Company. Awesome. Mike, he's awesome. And, uh, I mean, honestly, as always, uh, if you want, you can snag some of our awesome Wisconsin uh, Drunken History gear. Uh, Just honestly visit WisconsinDrunkenHistory.com, and we've got the links to all of that right there. So you can't even stray. You know, I mean, once you're on our website, you've got everything. Instagram, Facebook, Public, our YouTube, and our episodes right on SoundCloud. So go check us out. That's what we really need you to do. And uh, we also uh, want you to subscribe and share and rate, review, like, all that sort of stuff. Uh, Wherever you choose to listen to us, uh, if you're not already a subscriber or following us on social media or on Apple, uh, if you haven't left us a review on Apple, do so. It honestly helps us so so much more than you probably even believe Mm -hmm. it is a massive way of telling the algorithms that be uh, that you enjoy this thing and that they should push it to more people. So uh, that's really what it does behind the scenes. And we of course are in the works uh, with our uh, Patreon and trying to get content built for that. So that way we can really offer you something uh, very personal and and meaningful. Uh, We are still booking uh, brewery tours with some of the individuals that we've spoken to here. And uh, we're trying to get uh, some time with Uncle Jesse's Liquor Kitchen. He's currently brewing his own little bathtub gin. So Yeah, we got to definitely talk to him about that. <laughs> uh, and uh, 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 the Wisconsin Historical Markers, yes. those are always a, a fun thing to go and visit. Read a little bit about uh, the, the land and the thing that's right in front of you is really, really cool. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, little shorts that Russ and I are currently writing and, and trying to uh, put our producer writer and uh stage you know caps on and of course that never goes uh, smoothly <laughs> we uh, try we, we start try. having beers and then all of a sudden everything goes to hell so yep uh and uh so without any further ado uh, honestly this is the history of potato chips so wisconsin has somewhat unknown history of potatoes and actually a pretty deep history of potatoes actually central wisconsin being a massive producer of potatoes Idaho and Washington State are obviously the leaders. We all know the Idaho potato. But Wisconsin is still the third largest producer of this root vegetable. Yummy. And as a meat and potato kid growing up, my love for this brown round yeah. is huge. Yeah. I'm a huge supporter of the potato. It's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's been a good and a bad thing for me. It's probably contributed to my little beer belly. But it's helped me grow upwards and outwards. Yeah. But I still love the potato. It's helped me uh, branch out to new wardrobes, too. Yes. I've had to get some new suits because of the potato, but I still love it. And, you know, all the great things a potato makes, including French fries, waffle fries, vodka, potato tot, tater tots, and, of course, our main topic today, the potato chip. Yeah. Yum. And some don't know, but the Midwest has some deep roots. Get it? The deep roots. Really? Okay. In the potato chip market, (laughs) much of this information is hard to find as many of these obscure brands no longer exist. But one of the early brands we are talking about is Geysers from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Geysers was founded in Milwaukee in 1933 by Frank and August Geyser with a cheeky slogan like, Be Wiser, Buy Geyser. And the cartoon character was actually like an old faithful, the Geyser and a bear who carelessly held on to balloons. And 
you know, it, I think they went up until about the 70s. So you can see there's so you can see some of these old boxes. If you go to like flea markets and stuff, you're gonna see a lot of it. If you ever go to our social media, we post a lot of things. We have some commercials, some old geysers commercials we'll post, so you can kind of yeah. see what we're talking about here. Yeah, I mean and, and honestly, I just remember walking up and down the aisles at our local grocery store in Elkhorn uh and seeing boxed potato chips. This was really yeah. early on in my in my childhood and uh, and being uh being of an age that I can remember things uh you know walking up and down the aisles with you know my mom doing the grocery shopping I don't really remember where that switch happened where it was no longer a bag in a box and it was just the bag of potato chips you yeah know? yeah and there are still some brands but not very many left anymore yeah and we're gonna go through some more of those too so they have such deep roots in Wisconsin that they've sponsored a lot of teams in Wisconsin, including the Wisconsin Bowling League. And in 1977, they also sponsored the Milwaukee Bucks games where they had the chip shot competition. Nice. Where you'd you'd shoot to win some money, like a really hard shot. And the company would also the company would eventually sell out to in 1984 to the Borden Foods. The parents of Elsie the the cow, and later the 90s, the Geysers were were bought out. To what we know as Jay's Potato Company by the Jap Company, the J-A-P-P Company. Yeah. The brand would slowly lose production in Milwaukee and West Burleigh, which we know West Burleigh pretty well, and would eventually cease from existence except collectors who look for these old nostalgic items such as the figure of the bear and the geyser. Sure. Which... There's, People you know, like to collect and, and, and keep some of those older, uh, uh, you know, just uh, cool marketing and advertising items. Exactly. And there's a lot of these brands, and some of them still exist, some of them do not. We're just kind of going through some brief history. Um, so you can kind of get to learn and uh, figure out some of these brands that maybe you've seen in your childhood, or maybe you remember them as a kid growing up, or, what you know, whatever. So the next brand we have to talk about is the Red Dot Potato Chips that were located in Madison, Wisconsin area. At one point in history, Red Dot was the third largest potato chip producer in the United States with a sales at $11 million in chip sales. The Lay's company would eventually snag up this huge opportunity in the 1960s. And we all know the Lay's as they are one of the largest today and are more commonly known as the Frito Lay's Corporation. Yeah. Unfortunately, at some point, the Red Dot and its mascot, Tato the Clown, didn't make the cut and the chips were eventually phased out. But that's not, not to say that the, the legacy does not live on. A lot of people still remember the Red Dot potato chip brand. That's one of the ones that I you know I, I specifically remember. Yeah, is the Red Dots. Yeah. Yeah. And the next Wisconsin chip company we have we want to touch on is the Mrs. Howe's Milwaukee Chips, the company who first started as Cookie Sugar Cone Company that would offer the, the chip supplement for the summer months because obviously people uh, want chips. You know that are. Uh, the winter months, because obviously nobody wants ice cream in the winter, so they'd make chips in the winter months to kind of supplement mm -hmm. the, the cones. And uh, when husband Charles Howe died in 1934, the family began to manufacture the chips on the name of Just Mrs. Howe's. The company was acquired by the Heileman Baking Company in 1984 and moved production out of state. And you might realize, you might recognize the Heileman name um, as like the old style Heileman, yeah. and that's the same Heileman. They actually had a baking company at the time. Sure. And the next brand is one that's a smaller one, but actually still exists today. And you might see these chips today. You might recognize this name. Okay. The Delicious brand, the Delicious. It's spelled D-E-L-I-S-H-U-S. -S sure. Dash, dash. Yeah. And this was started in Wapaka, Wisconsin. And uh, one of the early brands started in 1938 that you can still purchase and enjoy. The company was started in 1932 when Mary Holmbacher began popping popcorn to start in five pounds bag, five pound cans, which she would sell to to taverns on bike or on foot. Along with her sons Fred and Victor, she would also sell popcorn and peanuts around the baseball stadium in Milwaukee. And at this time, it was probably the Braves, to be honest. Milwaukee Could have been, Braves. yeah, yeah. And slowly getting exposure, she would eventually turn to potato chips in 1938, as we stated before, the early brand. They supplied chips during World War II called the Delicious Dehydrators. And to this day, the grandsons of Marie, who are named Jim and Jeff, still make popcorn in the potato chips the original way. And you can actually still buy Delicious brands. I, I have seen it. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's, it kind of has like a more generic bag, but the chips are very good. They're really delicious and they're made the old old school way. It's they're tough really to good. really mess up a potato chip, but when you do it right and you do it really, really, really well, you become the top tier. Oh, for sure. 
I mean, it's it's absolutely amazing. And it's crazy because, like, you literally have the source right in your backyard. Central yeah. Wisconsin is a massive potato farming area. The yeah. sandy soil and, like, the... They grow super so hardy, well. And they're hardy, they're hardy vegetable. Yeah. And so we want to touch on another Midwest potato chip brand that gets many of the potatoes supplied from Wisconsin that is actually located in Minnesota, but they're still around and I eat them often. We are talking about the Old Dutch potato chips, who are also a Midwest favorite of the Barrel of Fun chips, which are also in the same family. They own both of them. Sure. Um, they were started by Carl J. Marks in 1934 in St. Paul, Minnesota, and moved to uh, 1937 to Minneapolis. And the name, the, the the word Dutch is why they use the name Dutch, is the Dutch have a, um, I want to say like a, a, they are known for their cleanliness and their like quality. You know, sure. if you buy like a Dutch product, like a Dutch, um, Dutch oven, Amish, a, I know about the Dutch oven is not quality. <laughs> All right. Well, I just thought, I mean, but the Dutch Amish, actually, you said it, not me. The Dutch Amish are known for kind of quality furniture and stuff. And, uh, yeah, for sure. For sure. And they can be actually be found all over the Midwest and even in the Mecca centers of the Midwest. That's right. We're talking about quick trip here. The uh, Mecca center of Wisconsin there, gay. Yum. Yeah. And we've all been to love uh, their hot trips. shelf. Oh nice. my gosh. They have like the best sandwiches. Absolutely. They're so good. And they offer a ton of different flavors and are usually my go-to for supporting the Midwest and uh, Midwest crop, Midwest uh, potato farmers. So they're yeah. my go-to. And there has been a decent chip revival in the state. And I hope it may, does make a comeback, including one of our guests today that we are talking to, the Milwaukee Chip Company, as well as the Hughes family in Janesville, Wisconsin, who produced the organic Blue Farms chips that we see in the stores. Yeah. You're going to see those blue chips. They're made in Janesville. It's pretty yeah. nuts. I actually know the family well, uh, and his son, Wilden, and I, at some point, we were actually in talks about starting a band. We were going to start like an indie like rock band, kind of like the Strokes and stuff. Nice. And that's kind of how I met him, and you know, I had a chance to kind of help with one of their harvests, and uh, unfortunately, I have a pretty demanding life with my engineering work, so I wasn't able to help him completely finish it, um, but yeah, it's just one thing, and they're really cool people. It's local, Janesville. It's just hard to believe when you see them in the store. That's Janesville, Wisconsin product. Yeah, I think it always, it, I mean, no matter what, when I see the the made in Wisconsin or something special from Wisconsin, uh, that little badging that they put on there to, to sort of indicate to you that this product is local and that you should support it, uh, even if that means spending uh, a few more of your hard-earned dollars and cents. Uh, it's likely going to be a much higher quality product as well because they're doing it in small batches. You know, they're not just producing millions of bags of potato chips uh, every minute. You know, it's it's more carefully constructed, and, I, and I like that. And do you have a favorite chip brand that you recommend or a chip that you like to eat? Yeah, I mean, so, I, I mean, I don't have necessarily like a, a, a favorite that I, I grab off the shelf every day. Lay's are just kind of a, a readily an easy, an easy yeah. go-to. And uh, recently at Festival, I've noticed uh, a company called Zaps, Z-A-P-P, and uh, they have this chip called like Voodoo something, and that one's pretty nice. Uh, it's a vinegary style chip, uh, like I like. Uh, but yeah, honestly, if if there's a potato chip, I'm gonna consume it. Oh yeah, I've been really into the uh, kettle, the kettle. Of course, brand. yeah, yep. Obviously, those are huge. And then uh, obviously amazing. the old Dutch, I've always been a go to because it come in a big ass. The box. old Dutch oven, huge. The old Dutch oven. I really don't want to open that box and smell a shit. It's going to be awesome. I just like potato chips, all right? Yeah. I don't want to smell a dooski. So. <laughs> <laughs> but that's going to conclude our I, main segment today. Yeah, I was just going to throw in, too, though, um, yeah, yeah. potatoes themselves. And I don't know that I'm uh, alone in this uh, in this car, but I like to just peel the potato and then eat it. Hey. I eat it like an apple. You do? Yeah. Sometimes I sprinkle a little bit of salt on the outside, but you don't have to. I mean, you, you could just, just literally take. Out. Yeah, absolutely. Nice starchy potato. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so like I said, I let me know on social media if you're listening to this episode and you happen to have some sort of a comment or some sort of an opinion or take on me eating raw potatoes. Uh, let us know. Are the you doing it or are you completely against it? Is this something you've never heard of? Hitting the raw dog tater. On to the music segment. All right. So today's music is brought to us by the band Bad Year 
and they are out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And the best way to sort of describe what we have in store for you is, or what they have in store for you is it is just powerful, maybe power punk, post punk. I mean, it is just, it's, it's, Hardcore fun. It is awesome. I mean, we've definitely listened to stuff like this, yeah. you know, a lot. I, I know. And I, it really fits in the, like, the music we love. And you mentioned, uh, like, Tony Hawk's Pro oh, Skater. Oh, yeah. Like, dude, it has to be in the next Pro Skater. This yeah. would be perfect fit. When when they when they revive that series, or maybe they did. I don't know. I don't have video games. But uh, when and if they revive this series or do another game, this is one of those Bad ones you got to put in there, in there for oh, heaven's yes. sake. I could imagine doing like some sick, sick. I well, I can't do Dude, sick I'm, tricks anymore, but I I'm gonna slap a freaking stalemate over a freaking half pipe. Yeah, dude. Well, this is just jamming out. Yeah. So uh, the song that we have for you is called Blackout, and remember the band is Bad Year. Amazing. Holy Gosh. God. I wish I was on my skateboard right now at the Fuck. skate park just jamming that sucker out. I punched a hole in the wall. You did? Y- yeah. Holy smokes. Yeah, it was we're going to have to sound fix that. quality. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. So good. It was I, super good. It just takes me back to uh, when music wasn't trying to uh, be on top 40. Like, Yeah, it wasn't formulated. It, 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 there was, it was something like, more behind it. Like a real message, a real feeling. It's not sound pads and uh, synths and loops and junky piss, you know? This was this is music. Good. It's like it Shit. reminds me of uh, a time when we, do you remember when we used to watch Fuse pretty much all day? Yeah. The Fuse station, yep, there was yeah, just good music man. every day, every second new And this is the 20. type of stuff that you would see on Oh there. yeah, just like, good stuff, like stuff real, we actually liked. Real music. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much. Check out Bad Year. They are absolutely phenomenal. And I know uh, as things sort of normalize in the United States of America, uh, 
we're getting vaccinated uh, and we can now go do real life things. So we now have a beer review that sort of ties into what we're talking about here. And uh, Russ, why don't you tell us what the hell you've got in your hand? Yeah, that was quite the transition. So today we're drinking the uh, Al Asylum Vax On, Vax Off. Mm. Mosaic, Mosaic Pale. It's coming in at 5%. And uh, we've talked about Ale Asylum before, Madison, Wisconsin. They always make a lot of good beers. Obviously, the Charlie Barons keep her moving. I know me and Eric have visited there multiple times. And uh, this one is really cool. So I'm going to just kind of describe the can to you a little bit. So the can is like a red uh, transitioning into a yellow color from bottom to top. Um, you got like the Karate Kid in the O on the off there. Just just about to, he's doing like the crane, about to just kick some ace wall yeah wallop some shit and i mean you know the cool thing is we wanted to feature this one kind of be the covid's on the dead dude uh eric has dropped some bows we've whooped its ass he went roddy roddy yeah. on covid absolutely and it's literally going away we got our vaccines we're ready for the summer ready to see some uh music again snap into a slim jam we're ready for the music brother yeah oh. And uh, this one's just great. And, you know, actually, I tried this one a couple weeks ago, and I'm like, we got to feature this one on the podcast. Somebody got me yeah. at one, and it is phenomenally crafted. Like, everything Ale Asylum does, this one is super amazing. This thing, uh, when you take – well, first of all, uh, when you first open the can and you Smell take that it. first sniff, Capri it Sun. is – tropical hawaiian punch it is, it's like tsh, tsh, it's awesome hawaiian punch baby it really it knocks your, your nostrils like it just into hard. another century and then then you take the first sip and i swear it goes down deep into your belly and then it starts just kicking the hell out of your lungs from it's below like, yeah exactly hit, that hitting the hard yeah but and, uh, you, you're getting a, like almost a fruity flavor yeah you for know sure. wrigley's you know, gum yeah, the, so this you're getting a scent. It's a very fruity tropical, and uh, you're getting the beer flavor. So you're getting that pale flavor, but you're also getting a sweet back note coming through really well. It's almost a tropical. I don't know how the hell they did this. And honestly, the can's kind of nice. That transition kind of reminds me of like a 1980s it's Miami. A sun, it's a sundown or something. Yeah, like a you know? Miami Nights 1980s, and like yeah. it's just kind of fruity and has like that like where tropical. Where you just wear a t-shirt under a suit jacket. Oh, yeah, you're driving a Lamborghini listening to Who was that wave. again? Don, Don Johnson? Is that what his name was? I, uh, I Miami think so. Vice? I think so. Well, we'll have to get somebody to confirm. If we're wrong, people will let us know. We, <laughs> they we usually have, do. We've done they that usually before. Do. And, um, uh, but no, it just reminds me of uh, you know s driving down the main strip in Miami there in a Lamborghini, uh, short sleeve shirt with the sleeves cut off. Just oh, driving yeah. down there, checking out blonde-haired babes on the beach with the freaking roller skates, like yeah. That's what reminds me. And it's so good. It's just I. So while we're sitting here, I did just confirm that Don Johnson was in fact in go. the uh, uh, '80s, '90s show Miami Vice, rocking a really sweet blazer with just a t-shirt underneath, and he's got some real high-waisted uh, white pants. Ooh. He's taking a real risk that he's not going to drip piss. All over those bad boys. Or he's one he's far away from ruining these babies. You, you think he's drinking in those? He's going to change before he goes drinking. Otherwise, there's going to be some piss trickle in those. Yeah. This is a big mistake on his part. Oh, yeah. Um, Whatever. He's smuggling uh, grapes in those, too. You to never know. I mean, so. honestly, he, uh, he made some questionable decisions in the 80s. And who didn't? But yeah, again, so this one, again, is the Vax on Vax Off, 5% Al, uh, from Al Asylum. Really good. The mosaic's coming through. I think... Coming through very well. The fruitiness. Yeah. I want to know a little bit more about the notes. Um, the can does not state specifically some of the notes, but you're definitely getting a fruity note. I mean, I can't quite put my name on it. it, it <laughs> Your name on it? I can't I can't put my finger on it. It's it's like reminds me of a Hawaiian punch or something. Yeah, I, uh, I, I'd be very interested to find out the technique used and... Uh, what exactly we're feeling here. So we're going to, we're definitely going to, we're going to uncover the truth. I'm going to put some fingers on some things and <laughs> we're going to figure this Russ out. Russ is going to put his name on it, all right? Yeah, I'm going to put my name and fingers on it. But it definitely has a Hawaiian <laughs> punch, Hawaiian feel. And again, go and check out Ale Asylum. Always has great crafted beers. Me and Eric have been there a couple of times. It's so good. Our friend Mike came with us. And they're just some good memories. And Ale Asylum is always known for great crafted beer. So please go and check this yeah. one out. Again, Vax on, Vax off. Ale Asylum, 5% ABV. I found this one today at Festival, actually. Festival's a delicious place. 
They have a lot of good beers. I've also and seen jolly it. At, good. I've seen it at Woodman's. Yeah. As well, so you can get this one at Woodman's. I'm not sure about some of the ones around here, but yeah. you can find them at lo- those local stores. So uh, hit it up. Yeah. Pick it up and try it out. Let us know what you think. Grab a seat, gather around, join us for a chat. How many locos you have? All right, folks, you know what that means. And uh, we got a very special How Many Locos for you today. We're talking about a hometown loco. Yeah, baby. Uh, so this one, it, it, it's brought to us from Elkhorn, uh, really near and dear to us there. Uh, so I'll go ahead and start this off by saying uh, we may or may not have been in school with this individual. It's we the will not, We will not reveal the name, but... Uh, it's, it is an Elkhorn, uh, reunion here. So <laughs> an Elkhorn woman charged with her fourth intoxicated driving offense was also driving with a revoked license as they often do. Uh, the town of Geneva police say that this individual got into an accident while driving at about eight thirty eight PM in December and that happened near County NN and Weaver Road in the town of Geneva. And uh, this individual had come from the Como Inn, which we is know, a we know that one. local tavern right down the street from the old titty club there. Woo. And uh, according to the complaint, uh, so an officer had reported that she smelled like booze and intoxicants and exhibited slurred speech and difficulty keeping her balance. Never she, good. Never she was basically good, like never that in high sign. school too. So um, <laughs> it wasn't normal. It was, it was a terrible drunk. balance. She so. had terrible balance always. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> results from a blood test are pending. Uh, the complaint does not explain the nature of the accident. Uh, she did live, obviously. So yeah, yes. nobody's hurt here. Uh, the individual had previous convictions in 2006, which is the year we graduated. Oof. 2014 and 2015, uh, the complaint states uh, she is also charged with violating a court order for an ignition interlock device, which she would have had to uh, have installed to, to drive. in order to get a license, which is, I'm sure, the reason why she was uh, had a revoked license still. So this is the Quattro we're dealing with here. She's yeah. 31 years old. Um, well, now now she's 33. Okay, this, so this is, is an this older is, article. This is a little bit of an older article, but, okay. you know. She's 33 now, uh, Reunion, uh, DUI, uh, the Quattro. Um, so what what are you thinking? I mean, we, what else do you think we should throw into this mix to understand? Yeah, uh, nothing. You think that's a 31-year-old? She has some priors. At the time, yeah, she's 31. She, at the Crash. time, had, uh, you know, multiple offenses uh, in her history. Uh, she crashed uh, in what... I mean, is I mean that's a completely known area to all of us. We know who went to Elkhorn, yes. uh, who grew up in Elkhorn. I mean, it's a it's it's a a very familiar place. Uh, you know, you shouldn't be getting into an accident, hitting any uh, stationary objects. You know, I mean, you you pretty much know all of them. So the uh, accident happened at Weaver, so she weaved right into something. Well, mm-hmm. she, yep. So and then, and Weaver, which I know, I know where the Como Inn's at. Yeah, uh, we don't have a a blood. But we know that she got into an accident, so she's probably drifting to sleep or tired or, yeah, or, or drunk. drunk really hard. <laughs> really hard drunk. And so this this person unnamed, do you remember, was she a tinier person? Do you remember? So like, I'm just yeah, trying to short, get like shorter, tinier. Shorter, yeah. Okay. Not, not typically a, a hefty But individual. she does have three other convictions. So this is numero quattro. So she does have some tolerance too. So we got to- some kids too. We got to break this down. So what do you th- do? You have an idea what you're thinking here? I just it's, I just know what I I think I've got the the local number that I'm you already that I'm have stuck that one at. kind yeah. of fig- so I, I'm really at a I'm at a loss here, but I do have a number. I'm gonna throw it out there in three, two, one, and uh, we'll see where you're at. Too. Okay, yeah, sounds so, good. All right, three, two, one, eight. Ten. A ten loco. Yeah, she's not quite. I'll meet drunk. you in the middle. I'll yeah, hit, I'll get you a nine. Are we doing another Nueve loco? Yeah, I think we might have to on this one. We just don't have some of the info, she, but she did cause she an accident. She got through two cans. Okay, and then she cracked the the third and was like, "I got to go home now. I got to drive. I just forgot. I have to drive." Okay. Yeah. So this is our first reunion loco. Yeah, this and one. This is a number Nueve. Yeah, yeah. So this one uh, definitely hits close to home. And I think we have settled. This is a nine loco. 
All right, so we are here with Mike from Milwaukee Chip Company. How you doing today, Mike? Ah, uh, doing great. How are you? Hey, we're enjoying some beers. I think I heard you enjoying a beer, so that means we're both sure having did. A, we're having a good Sunday. We're having a both. We're, yeah, we're both having a great day. So, um, yeah. So I mean, why don't you go ahead and give us a a, a rundown of of I guess the history of Milwaukee Chip Company and kind of how you got your start. Sure. So uh, I founded Milwaukee Chip Company here in River West, uh, in the River West neighborhood in Milwaukee, uh, March 2020. Uh, I've been wanting to enter the local uh, food scene for, for quite a while, and I'd seen local potato chip companies uh, do pretty well for them for themselves in some other markets. Uh, and you know, I, I thought there was an opportunity here. Uh, no one was making potato chips in town. Uh, started digging into it, found out that uh, we grow a bunch of potatoes here in, in Wisconsin. We're actually the third largest grower of potatoes. Uh, so started talking with some farmers, started talking with some restaurants, and, you know, tr- uh, turned uh, turned it into a little business. Yeah, awesome. and uh, what a what a business it is, too. I mean, I've, I've been kind of following you on uh, social media, uh, Instagram. I know we, we connected on, I think, first, and um, I've been uh, going to your website, too, periodically just to see, you know, what, what's been going on. And, uh, and I love the logo. I love the chips. Obviously, that's a, <laughs> yeah. a fantastic thing. Um, and, I, you know, I mean, I think you work with uh, Black Husky a little bit as well, uh, which is River West uh, Beer Company, you know, a, a brewery right there. So um, absolutely phenomenal stuff. I mean, uh, what, what sort of sparked your interest in, uh, in potato chips, I guess, in, in specific? Oh gosh, I've just always loved potato chips uh, since a kid. It's probably been my my favorite yeah. of the salty snacks. Yeah, and uh, you know I, I've moved around a little bit for school and work, and I've lived some places where they had basically like a micro brewery equivalent, uh, but for potato chips. You know, the same way that uh, we saw the beer market really consolidate, and we had these big national brands that kind of dominated everything, and now we have a uh, a much uh, I don't know, a, a, a much better beer scene, I think, nationwide. Uh, we've yeah. seen that happen with some other foods, and I saw it starting to sprout up with potato chips some places, and, you know, just the more I dug into it, the more and more it made sense here, and then, I mean, you, you mentioned the logo earlier, you know, once once that clicked around the, uh, the people's flag of Milwaukee, and this image of a potato being sliced on a mandolin yeah. that had basically been seared into my subconscious after spending the entire summer 2020 making potato chips in my little apartment kitchen. Uh, once that clicked, I was like, all right, like there's, there's something here. I, I can really run with this. So, Mike, I was going to ask too, so you're a huge uh, potato aficionado. Yeah. Um, have you ever been to Idaho and have you stayed in the large potato <laughs> I have not stayed in the large potato, but I have been to Idaho. I was out there uh, this last summer wandering around in some national parks and stuff. And uh, I happened upon, they have a drive-in movie theater called The Spud. Uh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, it has this That's giant awesome. like RV-sized uh, potato made out of something right along the side of the road. Uh, but no, I, I've heard of this uh, stay in a potato uh, like Airbnb or, or Verbo or something. Yeah. But, uh, I have not had the pleasure. I've not had the chance yet. Yeah, I was I was dr- kind of driving to the uh, Pacific Northwest and um, I saw it on the side of the road. I'm like, what Jeez. the hell is it? It looked like a it looked like a mass of potato. I'm like, yeah. what is that? Like it actually looks like a potato. It's like a fiberglass body kind of cement That's concrete. Awesome. So I had to pull off because I'm one of those people that, like I love to see roadside weird attractions. I just have to see it when I. It's like, what is that? Yeah. And uh, yeah, I found it was a massive potato you can stay in. You, you wow. can actually like stay in a couple nights in the potato. Yeah. I mean, if if you need to just like if you need that weekend getaway retreat to just think about potato chips, we're suggesting that to you, Mike. And I'll I'll be honest, I <laughs> I love I love eating raw potatoes too. I, I love potatoes. I don't know I if that is that potatoes. just a Wisconsin thing, like just peeling and and maybe throw a little bit of salt on each little slice, but. Jeez, I like it. I eat them like apples. Just just think about the potato and how much it provides. Potato chips, vodka, yeah. french fries. Like potatoes are awesome. Honestly, I'm probably a huge my favorite fan. food. Honestly, I love potatoes. Yeah. So you know, it's so cool. We love what you're doing. We love everything you got to stand for. Um, we love the product. And uh, Mike, yeah. Where can, I mean, where can we find uh, Milwaukee chips if we're if we're out there looking? Uh, so- 
So right now they're only available in the greater Milwaukee area. Uh, they're available at Black Husky Brewing, like you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, wonderful brewery right here in River West. Uh, available at Nice Sandwich in West Dallas. On the Bus, which is a vegan restaurant in the public market in the Third Ward in downtown Milwaukee. Small Pie, uh, which is the sister restaurant to Honey Pie down in Bayview. Uh, and then our, our highest visibility account, uh, they're available at the Pfizer Forum during Bucks games. Oh, yes, awesome. exactly. Uh, so I've only them. in the jockey room, actually. Only in the jockey uh, but room. But you yeah. know, it, yeah, and you know, I, I should really give a shout out to the Bucks organization, Pfizer Forum, Levy Restaurants, uh, Chef Ken, Chef Cliff. They have a really wonderful local food program there. You know, I, I, I dreamt of targeting that as you know a year two, year three account, but they make it so accessible for really small, really new businesses to get in there, uh, you know, even though I can't do really big volume or anything. I'm, yeah. I'm at the very beginning of my scaling up production uh, journey. Uh, they were basically like, hey, what numbers can you do? And what logistics can you do? And we can kind of work around that. So right. They've been fantastically accommodating. Yeah, they, they definitely, you know, they'll help you sort of fit in where uh, where they have, you know, uh, some sort of an opportunity. And, and like you said, that's perfect. Uh, I mean, you really, like you said, you targeted it for uh, something more down the line. And they were like, no, let's just do it now. And, and here's where we think it can fit. And yeah, yeah. Um, and and the product is great, and and the Bucks organization is a phenomenal uh, piece, like you said, to kind of already be involved with. So that's awesome. Can't be more proud of of you and uh, the the city of Milwaukee. And then hopefully somewhere down the line we can start shoving these chips down everyone's throat. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. You know, it's really been a team effort. Um, Milwaukee Chip Company has had uh, a wonderful group of partners. Uh, through the past 15 months or so. You know, Oak Ray Family Farms up in Plover, where we buy all of our potatoes, they've been fantastic. Upstart Kitchen here in Milwaukee, that's the shared commercial kitchen space that we use. Uh, they're a wonderful organization. They've got 40 or 50 uh, kind of small food businesses like my own operating out of there. Uh, they're really involved with the community, uh, really involved with helping out. Uh, so, you know, I, and I, I should shout out Goodland Creative and Marky Schmidt, who helped me with my logo. I sent her a chicken scratch pencil drawing, and she turned it into yeah. uh, a, a respectable logo. But, you know, leaning on all of the other wonderful, talented people and uh, really well-run organizations here in, in Milwaukee and in Wisconsin is, is really what made this possible. This isn't something that I, that I could have done alone. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure we went to school with Marky as well. So, um, yeah. Really, really awesome uh, little tie there, which is really cool. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I didn't even think about that. Oh, that's like, cool. Oh God, I didn't know did that. actually go to school with. Yeah, she was uh, uh, in Elkhorn for yeah. high school. Yep, I do remember. So, oh, that's awesome. You know, she does wonderful work. Uh, she did the logo for me. She did the bag design for me. Cool. Uh, I've got a bunch of other ideas for her, but I need to I need to pace myself. Yeah, right. So do you, do you think she had Mr. Brueggemann? Probably. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, probably. For, for, yeah, for, <laughs> so, for school, for marketing class. and yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, so before we let you go, Mike, um, can we ask you a few questions to find out how Wisconsin you are? Um, they're, just <laughs> ran, they're just randos, so we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna right. fire them off. We'll see what you do. Let's do this. All right, so the first one I got for you, have you ever milked a cow? I have not. That's, that's a pretty normal response, you know. I, one, I, I grew up on a farm, so it's like, you know, for yeah. me, it was easy. Like, all my family is farmers, so it's not a problem. We, you know, it's it's been a 50-50, I think. That one's a fun one to start with because I think right. it's, it's humbling to go ahead and get a no right there, you know? Yeah. And yeah. Because the, rest <laughs> for of these, one. the rest of these are going to be a yes, probably <laughs> yeah. for sure. Yeah. You know? um, have you ever tailgated at a Packers, Badgers, or a Brewers game? or Or all three? Uh, two of the three. Two of the three. Uh, so, yes, uh, the Brewers and the Packers, two wonderful Good. places to see a game. 
Yeah, absolutely. I agree it's, with you it's, a it's, thousand percent. You know, the the one thing I love about Lambeau Field is you can go to any other field and you're going to get booed for wearing a Packers jersey. But, you know, like the Midwest friendliness, we never like do aggressive stuff to even no. Cowboys fans. We always just like, oh, hey, no. come and grab a brat there. Hey, yeah. come on over. Drown your <laughs> sorrows in this beer. <laughs> right. You know, I, I hear that consistently from out-of-staters and it makes me so proud. You know, Packers fans are a class act and uh, Lambeau is like the mecca of football, so yeah. it's it's wonderful that they're great ambassadors. Like I that. agree. Yeah. All right. So the next one we got for you, and this one's probably no brainer. Have you ever been to Summerfest? But do you have a memorable band you've seen there? Ooh, yes. I, I mean, I love Summerfest. I go there every summer that it's on. Yeah. Uh oh, gosh, I've seen some really good shows there. Uh, you know, I saw Weezer, saw nice. the Great. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Awesome. Another good choice. Uh, you know, seeing uh, the Rhyme Sayers guys out of Minneapolis, yeah. it's a, a smaller hip-hop label. Those guys are fantastic. They usually take over a stage for a whole day. That's one of my favorite scenes. Yeah. Uh, Blues Traveler. Uh, I think Blues Traveler was actually the first Summerfest show that I had seen. Really? Uh, and those guys are wonderful. I might have been at that show because I did go see the Blues Travelers. It might have been the show. Yeah. It was probably like maybe late 90s. Oh, that was earlier than the one that I okay. went to. I, mine okay, mine was probably like late nineties. Yeah. I was gonna say we might have been at the same show because I definitely they're really yeah, good. My, <laughs> I was too young to go to concerts alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I had to go like with my mom, but yeah. I, I don't feel I was bad say, about late nineties. I think you know for Blues Traveler, that's worth it. Yeah, oh, I yeah. agree. I mean, it was with my mom, but seeing that guy just shred the harmonicas and stuff, it was totally yeah. worth it. That guy can rip. Yeah, I mean, just phenomenal. All right, so next question I got for you. Um, so we're going to ask you about uh, supper clubs, and do you have one that you recommend going to? Oh, gosh. Uh, I mean, 5 o'clock Steakhouse here yep. in, uh, oh, right in Milwaukee. It, it's kind of tough to top that. That that is that is your like Milwaukee staple think, supper club. Yeah, really. Yeah. As I mean, far that, as the city goes, I think that's you know one of one of the ones that we have uh, uh, kind of going for us for sure. Awesome. Yeah, you know when I when I'm out of the city, I like to uh, try other ones, and I can't think of the names of any of them. But you know, once you get up north and like into the, like the little lakes and stuff, it's like yeah. every town has its own little supper club, and they all do it just like a tiny bit differently. Uh, but. Now that's that's a great tradition. Sitting down, having a couple old fashions at the bar before being seated. Yeah, I agree. Oh man, so good. Gets you ready for the meal and everything. It's, it's you just... arguably my favorite Wisconsin tradition there is. <laughs> I agree. So, all right. So we got about three more for you. Um, the next one I was going to ask: As a Milwaukeean, have you ever closed Wolski's? Oh, absolutely. Right good. on. Good yes. for you. Awesome. It's so cool. <laughs> Fellow Wall Street I'm, I'm not rocking the bumper sticker. <laughs> no, no but, me neither. Uh, yeah, I've, I've done that a couple times. Yeah. That's so cool. I mean, I mean, we. I think, Sturge, you've done it. I've oh, done yeah. it. Yeah. I don't know where my sticker's at. I never put it on my car, but I no. have it somewhere in my garage, I think, somewhere. I'm sure. Yeah, it's. I, I, I'm, I'm sure it's stuck to something that I own around here. I don't know, but yeah, yeah, it's definitely, it's, it's the Milwaukee thing to do. Right? I know. That's so cool. Um, so the next one we were going to ask you too, do you ever make beer brats and do you have a beer you use? And it can be whatever, cheap beer, craft beer, whatever you use. Oh, yeah. you know, we have so many good brats out and about that I don't really find myself making them at home. Uh, but when I do, I, I boil them uh, or blanch them. I don't know. Right. Boil right. them for a little while and just uh, Miller Lite. That's kind of the go-to. That's yeah. like your standard. My uncle, my dad taught me that way. My you grandma. Don't, you don't have to spend a lot of money on the beer that you that you kind of let it soak in or, you know, boil it in. However you want to do it. Um you don't spend a ton of money. In fact, right. it's Luke sometimes PBR. best. Yeah, it's sometimes <laughs> best if you just have the oldest thing in the refrigerator still sitting and you're like, that might be a little on the skunky side by now, so let's just go ahead and throw it on the brats. <laughs> yeah, you know? I agree. This is more character. That's all it is. It's just more character for that brat. We had someone say they like age it for like three years just out in the garage. And I've had some it. pretty gnarly beers <laughs> to put in there. It's pretty wild. Seven-year-old <laughs> keystones that I found in a backpack in like some back room. That's extra skunk. Hell yeah. So, <laughs> All right. We got one more for you. Um, do you have a favorite brewery or brewery tour that you've been on? And it doesn't have to be in Wisconsin. It could be anywhere in the world. And it doesn't have to be a good one either. 
Oh yeah, you oh, get the world's worst. Oh, oh, <laughs> exactly. Black Husky. Well, <laughs> my 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 yeah yeah. So you know, Black Husky has their self-proclaimed uh, worst tour in yep. Milwaukee. Uh, <laughs> yes. But I'd be lying if I said I'd done it. I've not actually been on the tour before, so I can't claim that that's my favorite. Though Black Husky is my favorite brewery. Yeah, uh, they yeah. are a. A, a medium walk or a very short bike ride from my apartment awesome. uh, here in River West. So that that's a place that I hang out. And th- they're actually my very first customer. Tim and Tony are fantastic. Yeah. And uh, you know we we were there chatting over beers one night, and I told them about this thing. They're like, "Oh, we're totally in. Like you can put them here behind the bar." Cool. Uh, Anyway, but uh, the, the best tour uh, that I've been on has to be the Lakefront one. Right, yeah, I mean, that's I've, the... I've done it three times, you know, whenever <laughs> anyone comes visit from out of state, you have to take them on the Lakefront tour, yeah. and you sit out there and, you know, eat, eat all their wonderful food and uh, drink some beers while looking at the river afterward. Yeah, yeah really enjoying the... The, the Wisconsin culture when you get to the end of the tour and you get to the uh, the the line and you start singing the song you put the the glove on the bottle and then like yeah. you said you you take that that walk downstairs to the uh, to the river then and um I, no shortage of individuals to say that that lakefront is our best so I know you you can't beat singing the Laverne and Shirley song yeah I mean you just can't beat it you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean like it's just so good. Yeah, and, and like yeah, you, you know, said, a, a really great time to go to Lakefront is at the end of that Santa Rampage bike ride, even if you don't participate in it. So that's like early or mid-December, yeah. and it's a bunch of people who dress up, yes, you know, yeah. in Santa costumes, and they bike from, like, practically Tosa into Milwaukee, yeah. and then they all congregate at Lakefront afterward, and that is a sight to see. It is just a jolly good time, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> it sure is. But, Mike, thank you so much for your time on this Sunday. We really appreciate it. Um, we're going to continue to buy Milwaukee Chip Company products, yep. and uh, we want to do whatever we can to help you out. So we're glad you came on today. And uh, thank you so much, and I uh, hope we can get together soon, maybe have a beer or two and uh, eat some potato chips. Yeah, we'll meet you at Black Husky anytime. Absolutely. Absolutely. Drop me a line. We will do that. Uh, well, hey, thanks a lot for having me on, guys. Yep. All right. Have Talk a good rest of your weekend. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. All right, that concludes this episode of Wisconsin Drunken History Podcast. If you enjoyed this vulgar display of Wisconsin, please like and subscribe on whatever streaming platform you prefer. And remember to hit the bell on YouTube to be notified when we release new content. Also, if you have any suggestions or ideas for future episodes, please send us an email at widrunkenhistory at gmail.com or head over to our Facebook and Instagram pages. Thanks again for listening, and remember as always, watch watch out for deer deer on your way home. home.